Man, I'm getting so sick and tired of fucking with this steel. They only give me 30 minutes to eat lunch and chill. My body aching just to get a buck. I'm sick of eating this shit off this fucking lunch truck. Nasty ass food. I'm in a nasty ass mood. I should have called in sick. Should I have something to do? Can you imagine? How many years later? 12? Still getting called Vanessa. Vanessa, Vanessa from the eight mile truck. That's you, right? Why you trying to stop the shelves at Walmart? People ask me to spit verses. Spit your line from eight mile. I'm like, can I live this down a little bit? I do actually rap for real. My name is Miss Corona. I represent Detroit. No, my name is not Vanessa. I am not the eight mile truck lunch lady. I was in a movie, a movie. <laughs> but some people seem to get reality and fiction mixed together. I'm a struggling artist. I'm not gonna lie. This is something totally different for me. I'm nervous, shaking, always rapping in front of thousands of people, but right now, this is as real as it gets. I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit about my story about failure. Being in one of the biggest major motion pictures that has to do with music since Crush Groove, and still having to get a nine to five job. Sometimes being a janitor working at uh, theaters, cleaning bathrooms. You know how they say you gotta shovel shit to get what you gotta go, right? That's real. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff I had to see in these bathrooms. Woo. But uh, on with the story. Ooh, my phone rang. I get a call from a casting director. I'm like 21 at the time. In Detroit, that's rare. You never hear anything about movies in Detroit. I'm thinking like, casting director? You trying to put me in a porno? <laughs> <laughs> no thanks, bro. I don't <laughs> I'm not with that. So, after missing two auditions, I finally get a call from a brother of mine. You know, not a real brother, but you know how we do in the hood. That's my brother. That's, that's my sister. Everybody in the family. So I got a call from my brother. I just saw the news like the day before that Eminem was having an audition in a totally separate place that he asked me to come to for this movie audition. So I'm like, nah, I'm gonna go there because Eminem doing the movie. He's like, trust me, come. Come to this audition. It's at a hotel. I'm like, hotel? <laughs> that sounds if you know what I mean? I'm not gonna go there again. So, so he was like, no, no. It's real. So I go to the audition and the casting director, Mally Fan, was there. She, you know, I'm, I'm filming my scene. I'm like, she's like, say a verse, say a rap, one of your favorite raps. So I'm saying, like, my heart is rapping. She's like, bagging up with the camera. So imagine, like, an older white lady in the hood at a hotel. Like, I'm thinking I'm making her nervous. After we do that, she's like, that was awesome. Moving forward, get called for the role. I'm excited. It's so hard to keep a secret. Especially in my family, I had to hold it from everybody. But I get called for the role, I called my mom, told her, I begged her, please don't tell nobody. You know how our family is, they don't think we rich now. <laughs> <laughs> can't buy everybody's shoes, I can't do it. <laughs> so, so, we had to hold this for a whole year until the movie came out. And plus, you know, in Hollywood, you know, what I hear, sometimes they cut edit, pace, you be out of the movie, you think I'm telling everybody I could be a star of the movie and I'm nowhere in there. They're like, man, you fretting on us. I thought you were about to blow up. But, uh, so I get this, I get the call and uh, go shoot the movie, the scene, and the movie finally come out. Whole family go, just like I thought. Took up the whole theater. It's about half of you probably out there right now taking up the whole theater. Excuse me. Um, so, you know, People thought that the gravy train was coming in. I had a built-in entourage. I'm a loner, pretty much. So looking around, I'm seeing like 50 people that I don't even know at my shows. I'm like, they're like, who with you? I'm like, oh, these two. And it's like 25 more people like, oh, you were her? Oh, I don't know you. But after that, and mismanagement, that's horrible. Never let your friends be a manager if they don't know business. I don't care what they say. Don't do it. But mismanagement and just, you know, being around a lot of people trying to steer you in the wrong direction because they feel like 
when it's your time to blow up, you're going to put them on. In my heart, I want to do that. But in reality, we know it doesn't work like that. So, M didn't sign me. Tommy Boy didn't sign me. And, you know, Eris didn't sign me. I kept getting these letters saying, tone down your image. Tone down your lyrics. You out rapping the guys. You need to look more like Lil' Kim. You need to change your image to look like Eve. That's what's selling. So when all of that is said and done, call stopped, built the entourage gone, got to fire your manager who was your best friend because she don't know what she doing anyway. <laughs> my mama sending all the, all the demos to everybody. I'm like, I might as well let my mother manage me, you know? So I'm saying all that to say, just because you, people see you up here <coughs> don't necessarily mean that you got a million dollars because you was in a movie with Sandra Bullock, Speed 2. They feeling like, oh man, my cousin Jill, she on. You seen her? She was standing next to Sandra. They shook hands. They're best friends now. <laughs> it don't be like that. I, still, I shot the movie with him. I hung out with Brittany Murphy. At the end of the day, I was still in Detroit, still working at Myers, got another job working somewhere else, and everybody always see me at work like, Man, you was an eight mile. What you doing working here? I got bills, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I got a sneaker hat and I got socks. I got a kid that loves sneakers and video games. What you mean? That was 12 years ago. Let it go. I did. I don't know why you always going to it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just telling y'all, that's my story. Miss Corona, is, you know, it's a lot more. But I just realized that growing up and having a, a celebrity father who was a part of a, a huge group in the 70s, the Floaters, some of y'all might know the song, Float, Float On. I can't sing, so don't act. But I didn't realize until being asked to do this that surprisingly, the thought of failure was implanted in me as a kid. Because always hearing stories about how successful they were and then falling when you're at the top. And I just wanted so bad to succeed. I'm like, I can't be like him. When I get on, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to show everybody that failure is not an option. It's not, they don't run in the family. I'm going to blow up. I don't feel like I feel like he did. But, you know what I'm saying? It was implanted in me as a child, subconsciously. And that's, you know, you just gotta keep moving. I'm still uh, not working at Walmart, but y'all might get a call from me from a call center asking for some cancer donations. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I gotta do what I gotta do. I need the new shoes that's coming out. So, you know, my name is Miss Corona. I just want to thank Failure Labs for having me out. Thank you, MSU. You guys look beautiful from what I see out there. Woo! And uh, Eight Mile Part Two starring me coming out soon. So you know what I'm saying. <laughs>